Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And the Bulls have just upset the SAA, beating them 17 points to 14 in Cape Town in what I reckon is probably one of the worst and messiest games of rugby I've seen in a very, very long time. A horrible encounter really down in Cape Town. And the SAA guilty of their pack just being absolutely nowhere. No fluidity, no um, execution. It was just very, very poor, and the Bulls hung on for a long time before a bit of individual brilliance from Jan Gorsen and both tries um, that were scored were, was was the difference as the Bulls, and, and then a big um, kick from Chris Smith, a nice 50-meter penalty to, was the difference. But, yeah, it's a very frustrating game, and I think a game where, you know, it's you look at it and think that, you know, was it a case of the SAA trying not to show their, their cards? Because... They just didn't seem to have much of a game plan involved. And I think that they really allowed the Bulls to come at them. But before we break down exactly what happened and go through, and unfortunately there's not, you know, there's no one really doing the stats and stuff like that. But before we sort of do that, please do smash like on the on the video and um, subscribe to the channel if you are new. So it got underway with a try in the 12th minute from Apolletti Fassi. Probably, the, you know, one of the few decent passes to play when the spring mark, well, the SA actually trying to keep, keep ball in hand. You know, off the back of the line, a couple of phases. They went left, they went right. Um, a bit of space opened up. Kourinos Reynolds took a really nice break. Um, outside ball to Apolletti Fassi. And he went over very easily. Um, Alton Yankees nailing the conversion. Want to see the similarity. Then got sent over in the 17th minute as the Bulls piled on the pressure in the SAA. So 10 to 20 minutes was all, you know, one-sided. And the SAA under a lot of pressure. Um, you know, a lot of pressure. Scrum time. Kourinos Reynolds got hooked off the 24 minutes after conceding two scrum penalties. Um... But they couldn't really score any points, could the Bulls? And eventually the SAA, you know, managed to weather the storm and get themselves back towards Bulls territory. The Bulls also wielded the axe early after a couple of messy downouts, bringing on Skulk and um, bringing off Skulky Russell to putting on Johan Kobola, um, who actually played quite well. And I want to see the similar um, similar line across the line, 38 minutes in the 38th minute. Quite well worked. It was, you know, some some you know, a couple of good phases and a nice um couple of good and pieces of handling. They went to the inside outside a couple of times and um, pop inside to want to see the Similani, who gave it to Thomas Toy, who bashed that towards the line. And then, um, and then they went down the left to to Similani, but and and that was them. And then at halftime, you know, we saw a couple of players. I mean, a very nice conversion from Young, Alton Yankees there. You know, two out of two of his kicks. Then a lot of substitutions in the sort of fifty fifth, sixty fourth minute. Um, and I think the substitutions, ironically, you know, you look at the SAA and they've made subs in the fifty third, fifty fifth, fifty fifth, fifty sixth, sixty fourth minute. And I was after that 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 the um, the tries actually came. So ironic that they put on the subs to try and make an impact. And that was actually where the game sort of fell apart. But it wasn't like the SAA were controlling it. It was a very strange game. It almost looked like a side that wanted to be out there to, to make tackles and to maybe bash it up, but didn't want to play rugby. You know, they, they, they just never ran with the ball in hand at the SAA. They kicked away. That's why I wish we had stats, because I think they kicked away so much possession. Um, you know, Alton Yankees, you know, one of the best running fly, probably the best running fly hop in the country, spent his entire game kicking it to them. You know, Apple Fassi was probably the best backline player. Him and Roscoe Speckman were probably the best backline players solely because they actually had the chance to run with the ball because they were fielding, you know, deep kicks from, from the Bulls and, and, and then counter-attacking. But it was in the 64th minute when Keegan Johannes went over. Um, Johan Kursen spotted a mismatch. It was Thomas Atoy and Jean-Luc Dupree. A huge gap there. Went straight through the middle. A really nice supporting run there um, from Keegan Johannes who went over. And then almost immediately, a couple of minutes of the thing, Johan Kursen once again found a gap um, Quaker Smith broke his line too early. That's that Springbok rush defense, which I think, you know, the British and Irish Lions might look at it as, as a way for them to try to get into, into the Springbok, um, past Springbok defensive line. But, you know, a, a pass which looked a little bit forward to Muller Ace, a really nice counter-attack. FC Duplessis was very aware, kicked the ball back in field, and Gohan Krobola, with some very good support player, went over. And, and, then a, and then a really good kick from Chris Smith in the 76th minute on the halfway line, straight down the middle of the poles. And then the SAA had an opportunity right at the end of the game to where they had a scrum and they won a penalty off the scrum and then they picked up and went and they knocked the ball off. So, I mean, the amount of knock-ons from the SAA, the, the, the scrums were horrible, the lineups were terrible. I mean, Joseph Dweber, I thought, had a really bad game at lineup time. And then Fez and Barter came on and also struggled. So I think that's what the frustrating part is, is the fact that Whilst we were so willing, we were so obviously not trying to play a game plan, trying to sort of keep on hand and try and show any sort of attacking patterns, which could be studied, the the set pieces were so poor, you know. And I don't think that you would sit there saying, right, we're going to go scrum badly so that they don't um, think that we're good at that. We're going to go and you know lose all our lineouts. So I think that if you look at that entire SAA pack, I don't think a single player has put himself in contention for that box squad. Kuni Osazin was pulled off twenty minutes after conceding two penalties and one. Thomas the toy 
was probably better, but not phenomenal. Um, you know, as part of him and John Luke Dupree were, were part of the defense of a miss, misread, which Johan Kursen exploited for the first try. Nicky Jats van Rensburg, you know, he won a couple of lines, but they lost a couple of line outs. Renard Elstad, for me, once again, didn't really have much of an impact. Uh, Markham and Starden gave away a couple of silly penalties, also didn't have much of an impact. Quaker Smith, you know, was at fault for that second try, even though I think there was a forward pass. Um, you know, tried quite half in the first half, but Kubitz Reynolds I thought was pretty slow. Alton Yankees was fine. I wouldn't I wouldn't say he had a bad game at all. I think that, you know, he just, he had a nebulous game because he didn't, he kicked away a lot of the possession. Um, he made a very good, he made, he made a try saving tackle up against Marco Janssen Fu and a massive hit on him um, there. But, I mean, you go through the team. Roscoe Speckman looked good from the counter-attack, but had no opportunity. Damien Delendi wanted to see the similar line. He was starved of any sort of possession. Delendi, I mean, knocked the ball forward twice. Upley Lefassi was fine when he had to counter-attack, but the subs also, I don't think any subs came on and made any sort of a difference. Damien Willemser had a nice kick, but it was a bit quiet. Spoon Corsi made a covering tackle, was quiet. So we'll go through our player ratings in our, in our player rating show. Um, I, I think you can see how relaxed the SAA team were, is that they know that they kind of went out and weren't going to do everything in their power to win that game, but you never want to lose a rugby game. So that's the, that's the situation. Let me know what you thought of the game down below. Smash the like and subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, my name is Steven and I'll chat to you guys soon.